Hello and welcome to another episode of Talking Politics here at the Hindu with me Nistula Hebbar where we unpack the news making the headlines in domestic politics. This week we return to the hill state of Uttarakhand uh, which to which we have returned time and again before because of the three chief ministerial changes that the BJP had effected in that state uh, in a year uh, preceding the poll going year the state is facing assembly elections uh, in early 2022 along with Uttar Pradesh Punjab Manipur and Goa now on a personal note i want to say that i had wanted to uh, kind of record an episode this week on uh, Goa and a, a really mind boggling game of musical chairs that seems to be going on there uh, among leaders of various political parties switching sides moving uh parties etc um, it it has boggled my mind and i'm sure uh, readers and followers of politics are also want to know specifically who has moved where and what this game of chess that seems to be uh going around in goa mean but that we'll have to leave for another week because uh, uttarakhand came back into the news in style uh last week and uh, this episode of uh talking politics will therefore only be looking at that the hill state of uttarakhand is no stranger to uh, intra party rivalries and factionalism sometimes overwhelming the party and seriously hurting uh, poll prospects of both the bjp and the congress both these parties and it's a largely binary uh, uh, bi party fight in that state both these parties are infested with factionalism uh, uh, the this year we saw uh, uh, three chief ministers being changed in uttarakhand by the bjp and the congress also as demonstrated this week is not free of intra party fight now mr harish rawat the man who many people say will be the chief minister if uh, the congress wins the poll early next year and has been chief minister in the past considered one of the strongest faces of the party in that state put out a series of uh, not so cryptic tweets uh, on wednesday three tweets in fact talking about in allegoric terms uh, that elections are like uh, an ocean that needs to be crossed and the currents that aid one in crossing that uh, election rupee or uh, election like uh, ocean are uh, organization uh, the organized party organization and your own colleagues and that uh, though that uh, uh, pool has been now infested with crocodiles who instead of aiding one uh, are putting obstacles in the way this is as as i said a not so very cryptic uh, kind of uh, allusion to devendra yadav who's the party in charge from the high command in delhi uh, for polls in uttarakhand and how uh, there have been differences between him and mr rawat in terms of candidate selection and in terms of uh, campaign etc and uh, projection of a face to acknowledge that mr rawat in fact will be leading the party's fight in the assembly election now uh, because of uh, deep infra uh, intra party fights in the bjp the congress does fancy its chances in uttarakhand and the congress high command unlike in the past did not waste much time they called mr rawat to delhi uh, to try and sort out uh, his issues with the uh, um, the state unit there uh, and uh, although the factionalism still appears to be fierce for this time around mr rawat claimed victory he came back and he said that the party would be fighting elections under his leadership in the state and that he would be the main face for the party of course he also got a few digs uh from former union minister uh in the upa government mr manish tiwari who's lok sabha mp from punjab um and uh, he also of course uh, did not mince any words not so cryptic tweets about how uh, he held mr rawat responsible for the party's bad show in assam and uh, later the way he uh, favored mr sidhu in the uh, factional fight that was going on between mr sidhu who's the punjab uh, uh, congress chief and former chief minister amrinder singh uh, all that aside though the party high command has decided to go with mr rawat they think that to change horses midstream and to eliminate mr rawat uh, would be too big a risk in a state where victory margins are very very small uh, the assembly is very small uh the congress war chest is depleted on the other hand the bjp's war chest is kind of squared and they have all the resources to win uh mlas legislators etc to bulk up majorities and therefore uh for a comprehensive united fight uh mr rawat needed to be placated and he would be the 
face for the Congress going into the polls. Uh, uh, the BJP had barely kind of looked at all this with mounting glee, saying that, okay, we are not the only ones who suffered through the year and we have sorted our issues out with Pushkar Dhami as the face of the party uh, going into polls. Uh, when uh, trouble erupted for the BJP on Friday evening, Harak Singh Rawat, who's a forest minister for uh, the state in uh, Mr. Dhami's cabinet, uh, he had, please remember, he had moved in from the Congress. He was part of that bunch of Congress uh, MLAs who had switched sides in 2016 uh, to join the BJP. He suddenly erupted in rebellion. Uh, he walked out of the con uh, cabinet meeting in Dehradun on Friday evening in, uh, in, in dramatic fashion and said that uh, he was not being given any importance. He was being neglected. He was being treated very badly by the BJP-led government, that he had promised his people that he would be uh, setting up a medical college in Kotwar and that the state government run by his own uh, party had not uh, adhered to his wishes in uh, announcing the setting up of the college and giving rupees 25 crores as funds for the setting up of that college. Now, the BJP government in the state has been saying to him in the past that there is a policy that they follow, that they don't have more than one medical college uh, per district and that Cote uh, therefore is full up. Uh, but uh, Mr. Rawat was not willing to listen to this. He walked out and he said that uh, he would be resigning. He did not send his resignation either to the governor or even to uh, Chief Minister Dhami. Uh, BJP chief in the state, uh, Madan Kaushik, came out and said that uh, uh, efforts were on, that nothing was wrong, all was well, that this was an internal fight that would be sorted out soon. There was no question of Mr. Rawat uh, resigning. Uh, there were also rumors that Mr. Rawat and MLA's uh, uh, loyal to him, like Umesh Sharma Kao, had been in regular touch with the Congress party leader Pritam Singh uh, to jump ship because they fancied the Congress's chances this time in coming to power. Uh, please remember that another BJP MLA, Yashpal Sharma, has already moved to the Congress uh, ranks and Mr. Rawat was supposed to follow soon. That could still happen, but on Saturday evening, Due to the, you know, uh, uh, intermediaries like uh, Rajya Sabha MP Anil Baluni from the state and other leaders of the BJP, uh, a truce was kind of called. Uh, Mr. Rawat uh, uh, arrived at uh, Chief Minister Pushkar Singh Dhami's uh, house for dinner um, and um, gave out statements stating that Mr. Dhami was his younger brother and that he had known him for decades, that he was compassionate and merciful and rarely had Uttarakhand got a chief minister like Mr. Dhami and that he gave his blessings to Mr. Dhami that BJP returned to power with a full majority, etc. Uh, all of these statements came out. BJP was pretty relieved and they said that uh, um, matters have been sorted. Mr. Rawat himself said that the government has agreed uh, to set up a medical college in Kortwar as asked for by him. Of course, no government order has yet appeared on that. It might uh, going into this week or it might not. Well, the one thing that both the Congress and the BJP sources have told us and have agreed on uh, is that this truce uh, uh, may yet turn out to be uh, temporary, that Mr. Rawat is an old player uh, in the game of musical chairs in that state and uh, that there is a long way to go before uh, uh, the Congress and the BJP ranks are finalized as to who is going to go head to head with whom in the coming assembly elections. This is a, a very, very old fashioned sort of political story that is um, unfolding in Uttarakhand uh, of uh, leaders and egos uh, and uh, strategic bargaining just before elections. Uh, needless to say, we will be following this rather interesting story, even if it is old fashioned, and uh, keep you in the loop. But this is all I have for this week. Thank you for watching.